So this is my wagon. And today's video is how to get your wagon or your general 123 300 series. This even pertains to the 240 in some aspects to last half a million miles or more. Now, Still one of my favorite sounds. I have an engine. It sounds absolutely phenomenal. What is going on everybody? Today's video involves my beloved 85 300 TD. I'm gonna shut it off now so you can actually hear me talk. All right, so I haven't done a video on this guy in a while. Life's crazy. I'm still daily driving this. And I figured, I don't know, I thought about the other night on I should do a video on how to get a 123 to last half a million miles or more. And things that I have learned along the journey of owning this and owning several 123s over the years of tricks, tips, and things that really prolong the longevity of these amazing cars. So, a quick notion and an intro. Yes, this is my 1985 123 300 TD estate wagon. This is the last year of the 123s. Technically 86 was, but I have yet to find an 86 123. I think it was more in Europe than in America. They've aged very well. This is the original color. Obviously, I've done some tasteful mods to it, in my opinion. Tasteful, in my opinion. Here's Nugget, in his favorite spot of this car. This is my fifth 123 that I have owned. It's also my favorite part about this wagon. Rear-facing seats, this is childhood right here. I've done things like a roof rack, <laughs> the brightest aftermarket rally lights I've ever seen in combination with these I uh, this is probably my newest newest addition to this if you haven't seen it in a while it's my favorite this is like when these are on is like be, being hit by the surface of the sun <laughs> it's incredible so this is my wagon and today's video is how to get your wagon or your general 123 300 series this even pertains to the 240 in some aspects to last half a million miles or more now these cars have been noted as the world's most reliable car i feel that this is the hands down the most reliable car that i've ever owned and i've owned a lot of vehicles over the years the toyota 22r is up there when it comes to reliability and there's a countless other engine manufacturers and car manufacturers out there that really do produce an amazing engine from Germany, in my opinion, from its robustness, I still find this one of the best bang for the buck all around cars. I mean, truly, it has been the most headache free car I've ever owned out of all the cars I've owned. Um, it always starts, it always get, gets you there. But there's also negatives that come along with a 123. You know, you'll hear that people will say, oh, they're so slow. Yeah, they are slow. They're not fast at all. This thing makes an astonishing 125, 130 horse. Parts are expensive, it is a Mercedes. Parts, uh, to get the car fixed, if you're paying somebody can be expensive if you don't choose right. Preventative maintenance is what really will set the benchmark for these to last a half a million miles or more. And I will go over those aspects in detail form, what I feel are one of the most crucial aspects to keep an OM617 alive for half a million miles or more. So let's pop the hood and I will show you. So this 
is the glorious OM617. It's a three liter, five cylinder turbo diesel. And you could get this variant in several forms, non-turbo or turbo. 85 was the last year for these. Uh, and there's a couple of changes in the 85 year that differ from others. There's also a California addition or smog, which you'll see a different air intake layout and turbo. You could get two different types of turbos from the factory, uh, as well as a multitude of other versions in Europe that I'm not super keen on. This right now is the most, I think, the best option that you can get in, as far as the 123 series. Is it the most reliable out of everything out of the 123 series? No. The 240D, in my opinion, is the most bulletproof um, aspect that you could ever want. Obviously the 240 is a 2.4 liter, four cylinder. It makes it an amazing, I don't know, 55, 60 horse. I had a 240D with the manual, which made it honestly one of the most fun sedans for 50 horsepower ever, or 70 horsepower. I always say the horsepower numbers on those. It's slow, it's ungodly slow, but it's not as slow as everybody makes it out to be. And yes, I was wrong. The 220D is the slowest Mercedes they ever made. In fact, I, actually, no, I take it back. I think they have a 190D, but um, I always said the 240 was the slowest and it is not. There are two other variants that are even slower. This is the fastest out of the 123 uh, turbo diesel line. Uh, and like I said, rated at 125 horsepower. Um, so longevity is what was the purpose of this era of cars in my opinion this was a time when mercedes built some of the most robust cars and engines and drive lines ever we'll never see an era like that ever again even my 68 108 was built incredibly well but it doesn't have that build quality that i feel that you get from a 123 and they truly are, in my opinion, the most reliable engines that are out there right now. They will always run, they always start, and they really seldomly ever give you headaches. Now, I've owned this car for several years now. I've never been left stranded. The only thing that has ever failed on this car was the alternator, which is this guy right down there. And it still got me home, even after the alternator completely seized up. It still got me home. It has always started. It has always got me to my destination and it never has been has left never has left left me stranded and that is rare to say in a lot of cars today especially in today's modern technology i mean you can't even work on a new car today it's it's just it's absolutely so complicated and i guess that's why i'm still drawn to these old diesel engines uh these are an iron block type engine so that makes them even more robust but this is where it breaks down. These are things you need to do to your 123 or at least verify, check and do periodically to make sure that they last and run. Because if you don't do these, these are items that can fail and they will completely um, lead, to, lead to the demise of this engine. And let's start with your basic maintenance. Now, these require valve adjustments manually. And, and you'll hear people say, oh, don't worry about valve adjustments. You'll hear other people say, do them every 5,000 miles. The staple time frame is every 10,000 miles. You need to do valve adjustments on these. You can buy a special tool. It's easily done yourself if you just YouTube valve adjustment OM617, but you need to do that every 10,000 miles. That will These will tighten up over time and you will lose power. Ensuring that the valves are adjusted correctly ensures that you have the most optimum horsepower emitted from this engine, which let's be real, every horsepower counts. Next on the maintenance list that I feel that is kind of necessary to at least check, but also replace over time, the injectors. From the factory, these had Bosch injectors and they wear out over time. You'll get a common uh, failure point known as injector knock, but that's just the start of it. I feel that when injector starts going back, a diesel compresses a, a diesel fuel or diesel oil, you know, liquid at a very high PSI and it atomizes. And it, when the high compression piston comes up and it, it, it's the massive amount of force from the perfect atomization of that diesel fuel. And that is done by a properly adjusted injector. Over time, these wear out. The atomization breaks down and you'll start getting 
uneven uh, injection of the diesel fuel. And that creates a multitude of failures. Number one, it doesn't run right. Number two, you get poor gas mileage. And number three, it can actually be somewhat hard on the engine because it's washing away the lubrication of the cylinder walls. So you definitely want to at least pressure test. You can pressure test these and test the pop-off pressure of your injectors. But in my opinion, rebuild them. They should be done, in my opinion, every 100,000 miles. Somebody might, if you want to chime in, if you feel like it should be done sooner or later, post in the comments. I'd love to hear it. But that needs to be addressed because a properly tuned injector set, five of them, will ensure that a you're getting the best performance the best gas mileage and you're saving that side cylinder wall lubrication and not washing it away with an injector that's just squirting raw diesel instead of properly atomizing it these run at a ridiculously high rate of pressure this is your injection pump right here um i it's almost a thousand psi if i'm told uh you might want to look that up but it's very high these also need to be adjusted over time but if it's running right, and in my opinion, if it don't touch it, if it's not broke, I'm kind of emphasizing on these because these are a complicated pump. And if they're working just right, there's no need to touch them. That's just my opinion. But the, the injectors themselves, absolutely, at least check the pop-off pressure um, and, and just a multitude of other reasonings of, to ensure that your OM617 is running really good. Next on the list, your glow plugs. These are these guys right here. You got five of them. That's what ensures when you're pre-starting your diesel, these will turn gold, they'll turn bright red, and it's what essentially starts the ignition of your diesel engine. Change them out. They go bad over time. And especially in the winter, if you have a really good set of glow plugs, will either dictate whether this starts in the winter or it doesn't. Um, and they're not expensive, they're easy to replace. So that's one thing to consider. Change your glow plugs, or at least check them. Uh, carbon deposits build up on them, and that becomes a problem for cold weather starting or just starting in general. Next is oil. Now, sorry, it is windy today. Oil on these, in my opinion, is probably one of the most crucial aspects of these. Frequent oil changes will dictate the longevity of these engines. Diesel is already inherently dirty. Um, I mean, it is. It, it, it literally is. And it's by default supposed to, it gets dirty faster, higher temperatures, higher soot. It's just a dirty type of engine dynamic. And that means that the oil in the engine breaks down faster than your conventional gasoline engine. Change it often, run good stuff. I run Shell Rotella 1540 every 3,000 miles on the dot. And that really dictates the longevity of these OM617, even your 240 engine as well. Oil changes and do them often, 3,000 miles. And run a good Bosch quality filter. Uh, they're huge. The oil filter is in this canister right here. It can be sometimes a pain, but once you get the system down and you do a few oil changes, it's out and in, it's easy. Another aspect is make sure all your linkages. This is your throttle linkage. I mean, it looks like it's crazy complicated, but it's not. You wanna make sure that everything is in unison and you're actually getting full throttle. These commonly fail. Make sure that this is working correctly, opening all the way when you go full throttle. I had an issue where I was not getting 100% throttle, more like 60, and I adjusted that and I couldn't believe how much quicker my car was. That's one aspect. The next is the fueling system. I kind of ba bounce back and forth, but they are important. You have two filters on these, all right? This is your first fuel filter or diesel filter, and then you have an inline as well right here. You need to change these frequently, and you can always check to see how much deposits you're collecting from your tank. Unfortunately, these tanks will break down over time. There are things you can do to prevent that, but they still will break down uh, and you will get a little bit of deposits in your fuel filter system so you definitely want to I do it at the beginning of the season and I do it at the end of the season you're, you're talking 15 bucks for this you're you're talking uh, get the special wrenches for your valve adjustments that's maybe 30 bucks from like Mercedes source my father has the original set that came with his so he has given me those for mine 
So cheap insurance, valve adjustment, injectors, you're looking at maybe rebuilt 350 bucks, but be careful about rebuilt. You can buy new Bosch from like eBay. Do, be very careful because the quality has gone downhill very fast for new injectors. So you're almost better off sending your old ones in to uh, a person that specializes OM617 injector rebuilds and having new nozzles. Monarch is one of the better nozzles out right now, but just do your due diligence. Be careful on what injectors you buy. I would avoid the new Bosch injectors because they're not the same as Bosch Germany. Next, and this is probably the most crucial besides your oil changes. This, this is probably, in my opinion, what I've seen over the years, the biggest failure points on an OM617 besides running it out of oil from not doing oil changes is your oil cooler rubber lines. This is your oil cooler, okay? Now, your engine has a lubrication system circulates the oil, filters the oil through your oil filter. This nozzle right out here feeds right underneath, is pumped up through your oil cooler, air is drawn through your oil cooler, pulls excessive heat away, is redistributed back into your engine block. These rubber lines are, in my opinion, one of the most crucial points on an OM617. If you are unsure if they've ever been replaced, or you have any signs of leakage, replace those. Because the minute that that ruptures, you have milliseconds to shut off your engine before it causes catastrophic damage to your to the OM617. I would say this is the biggest failure point on the OM617. You could run these at full throttle all day long and it won't skip a beat. But the minute that oil line ruptures, you literally have milliseconds and this motor is toast. So. Also, be careful what oil lines you buy. There's a lot of aftermarket manufacturers that sell these. You have your upper and your lower. The quality is subpar. You're kind of playing with fire with the cheap oil line, even though it's a good deal. Um, is it cooling, cowling? I'm gonna say it wrong. That seems to be the best manufacturer for aftermarket oil lines. You could also just unbolt yours and take them down to a hydraulic hose shop and they can make you some new ones. Definitely check that. Just check to see if you have any cracks, any oil seepage. That is a big catastrophic failure on these. And if you're doing a big road trip on one of these and that fails, you're done. So just consider that. Preventative maintenance as well. Vacuum lines. Obviously it's the, these are all vacuum lines through here. And it can be kind of a pain to trace down vacuum leaks. But if you can minimize a vacuum leak throughout the car better than it originally was, you're gonna get a much better performance out of this as well as your transmission. These are vacuum control moduled transmissions. Um, they rely on vacuum pressure to shift properly. And so you'll get better performance out of that and that will obviously prolong the longevity of your engine. Driveline wise, well, you'll hear 50% say do it, 50% don't do it. Do not do transmission flushes in my opinion. You have a transmission filter, replace that, and do a transmission fluid replenish. Drain the old fluid, add the new, but do not flush it. I've seen plenty of these 722 transmission automatic four speeds fail because somebody decided to flush the transmission entirely with a transmission flush additive and that essentially failed that transmission over time because of that the drive line they say quote unquote is lifetime i argue with that and the manual even states that it should be changed every 50,000 miles 75 or 80 90 weight is a common gear lube um, depends on the climate that you are in same with one of these engines i think 1540 is good year round. If you have a block heater, then you don't have to worry about the oil turning into molasses and not starting in the dead winter. If you do not have a block heater, then think about a thinner viscosity oil on these. But as far as the drive line, every, I would say change it every 50,000 miles, but that's my opinion. Besides that, I would say that encompasses what would be, oh, hold on. We got one other thing too that I want to discuss. These turbochargers, Excuse me, it's a little windy today. The turbochargers are fantastic and they're actually relatively maintenance free. The, um, they have an internal wastegate 
built into them. You want to check any of the rubber lines down here, any excessive oil leaks. Uh, I mean, who are we kidding? OM67s always leak, but excessive oil leakage from your turbo could be a warning sign that something more serious is about to happen. You want to make sure that your intake is solid. It's not rattling around and moving because then there's a gap between the actual intake and the intake manifolds, and that can suck in debris. And obviously debris induced into the engine will shorten its lifespan. Air filter changes, obviously, well, that's a no brainer. Change that at the beginning of the season. And coolant flushes. There's a special type of coolant, and I'll put it down in the description. Be careful what coolant you run in these. Also, do not use just regular tap water. You need to use distilled water because the mineral deposits will cause issues inside the block over time. So coolant flushes, I say every two years. Some people argue with that, but that's just has worked for me for this. Um, your transmission, obviously check the fluid, make sure there's fluid in it. I don't know how many types of scenarios I've found where people says, oh my 123 doesn't drive. It's just stuck even when I put it in driver reverse. Well, did you check how much transmission fluid you have? I've seen it very common where they're just below the minimum and then they top it off and it runs and drives perfect. So fluid quantities are vital on these. Absolutely vital. But besides that, I mean, in my opinion, like I said, those, if you do those aspects, this will literally treat you amazing and be the best car you've ever had. And it will easily surpass half a million miles by do, do, just doing those simple maintenance items. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it was somewhat informative on things to do to your 123 to prolong its longevity and ultimately to make it to half a million miles or more. Hit that like and subscribe button. Thanks for watching and I'll do more 123 videos coming up. We have a new project that we're working on from the 80s that I'm going to tow with this. And you're going to love it because it's very 80s. In fact, I probably should grow a mullet for it because that would be the cherry on top of the sundae. So thanks for watching, guys. Take care.